Hello, welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where today we're going to try the puzzle on the screen that you can see here. This has been sent to us um, by Derek Neal. It's one of his own puzzles, um, and he says he thinks it's staggeringly difficult. Um, so I think he's plugged it into a, a solver, and the solver has said it's rated 400 on its scale. Um, diabolical. And he says a New York Times hard puzzle normally comes in at around 120 on that same scale. So something more than three times as difficult as a New York Times. Sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Um, quick reminder as well, a uh, very exciting day for us on the channel. Um, our Sandwich Sudoku game comes out today. I think it's actually already out on the App Store. Um, it'll be out at, in about an hour's time uh, on Steam, which uh, will mean that those of you who want to play it on desktop, either for PC or Mac, will be able to play then. And the Android version is coming out in the next few days as well. So it's hugely exciting for us. And um, yeah, we really, really hope you enjoy the puzzle or the puzzles in, in the game. So do let us know what your, what your feedback is. Right, so here we go. Here's Derek's puzzle. Now he says this puzzle should have a title, which was something like Lucky One, Two, Three, Lucky Sevens. And I don't know what that means, but I do know that there are sort of three sevens here, so I don't know if they're going to be important to the solve. Um, let's see what we can see. Uh, so one of these two squares has got to be a four. Um, I'm just looking in the wrong place, but I'm not seeing much here at all. Ah, sevens. This square here has got to be a seven. Let's put that in. Ah, and this one nine here. Look, that has a nice effect on this uh, row two of the grid. Where can we put a one and a nine in this row? Well, it's only going to be in two places. It's got to be either here or here. So these two squares must be four and six, which means that this is a four and this must be a six. We can remove the four from this square at the bottom and we're off and running. Now let's see what we can do further. We can pencil mark sevens at the bottom, pencil mark ones into these two squares eights into these two squares, and eights therefore at the bottom there. There's be a nine in one of these two positions. Am I meant to focus more on sevens than I am doing? Yeah, maybe one of sevens those two squares. Uh, Jeepers. Um, so I need one, five, and eight down this column. So this square here has got to be a one or a five. And this square at the bottom will be a five or an eight. Maybe I can find some pairs that will help me. Um, let's have a look at row one of the grid where I need two, three, five, and nine. So this square is a five or a nine. Mm. This square is a 3 or a 9. There must be a 1 in one of those two squares. There must be a 3 in one of these two squares. And the number missing is 6, which must be down in one of those two positions. So we've got everything pencil marked in this block in the center. Something I'm tempted to look at now is an empty rectangle situation. Um, so if we look at the threes and the ones in this block you can see that they they are offset. So let's just pick the ones for, as an example. If we look at the ones, the ones the one in this block either affects this column 
or it affects this row. Because obviously if it's here, it's going to affect the whole of the row. Now that allows us to hunt in the grid. And let me just try and see if there's anything useful. This column. No. Ah, well there is something, but I don't think it's going to give us anything helpful. So I'll sh explain the point I was thinking about. If we look down column 8 here and ask where a 1 can go, you can see that the 1 could go in this position or this position, only in these two positions. And therefore we can do a little bit of logic using the 1's in this block. We can say either the 1 is coming down here, or if the 1 is here, it sees this square. And because there are only two positions for the 1 in column 8, that means that this square here would be forced to be a 1. So we get an interaction. We either actually know that this is a 1, or this is a 1. And therefore, we can hunt in the grid for cells that see both these squares. And we find this square. But unfortunately, this square we already know is not a 1 because of the 1 here. So I think I'm barking up the wrong tree. Um, let me just check threes as well, because this threes are also forming an empty rectangle in this block. By empty rectangle, by the way, what I mean is there's, there's a sort of two by two shape of cells in a, in, a, in a three by three box that cannot contain the number. So here you can see this two by two doesn't contain uh, a three, and therefore the three is either here or here. In fact, if we look at the central column of the grid now, we've got, we have got another empty rectangle because the threes in the central column either go into this square or this square. So again, we can say with certainty the threes are either here or this square is a three, which means, but it's still not eliminating anything. It's just pointing pointing at that square where this square this three here is already eliminating a three so right I know what I'm going to do I'm going to look at slot machines because Derek for those of you who didn't know uh, I'll put a link in that uh, that should come up on the screen now but basically Derek is famous on the channel for introducing us to a new type of Sudoku logic which he calls the slot machine and it's a sort of technical way of discovering some very, very exotic techniques. So if you, if you go to a solver, a solver will find things like thin swordfishes, which are very hard to spot. They can be spotted, and I, I can spot them, but they take me a long time to see. Now, the slot machine is a shortcut to those methods, and I'm going to test that now. And especially, I'm just seeing it here, the ones are all offset. So let's remind ourselves about the slot machine and how it works. What Derek recommends for a, a slot machine setup is a situation where numbers are completely uh, offset in the sense there's only one of the digit in each sort of set of um, uh, three rows and columns. So you can see this one is the only one we'll find in all of these squares. And the same is true of this one. This one is the only one you'll find in all of these squares. Ditto this one. Only one you'll see in all of these squares. So that means that when we look at other blocks in the grid, they are sort of always affected by two of these numbers. So you can see this block is, is affected by both this one and this one, which is forced if you have this set up position at the start. So I'm going to highlight all the ones in the grid and all the possible places that ones can go and it will go from there. So you can see these are the two places in this block, uh, these squares here, these squares here, uh, these, oops, not that one, uh, I'll take that out in a minute, and those ones. They are all positions that ones can be. Uh, apart from the central block where you can add those squares. So what I like to do now is I pick um, one of the um, 
I pick one of the 3x3 three three box that only has two positions for ones in it. So let's look at this this one, I guess. Um, no, actually this one. I'm going to look at that square. So let's ask ourselves if this square can be a one. And the reason I picked that is I could immediately see it was going to impact on this top block. So let's, let's imagine that this is a one. I'll make that blue therefore. That's going to force a one here, force a one here, force a one here, here, ah, and there. Now look, we have a problem. So if this is a one, we get a repeated one in row eight of the grid. So we are off and running. This square has got to be a one because of the slot machine logic. Now, what I might do at the end, if this does prove to be a useful way of solving this, I will overlay on this video. Um, I don't know whether it will be a screenshot from a solver or something that will show whatever the technique was that you could have found this one with that wasn't a slot machine. So I don't know what that technique will be, but I guarantee, or I'm pretty much sure, it will be something horrific. Um, and we haven't had to use anything horrific here. We just had to use Derek's slot machine. So now there must be a one in one of these two squares. Just seeing whether this one's going to give me anything extra. I don't think I don't think it's going to give me anything more than that. So let's let's unhighlight all of these squares now in terms of the colour. And look for the next well I'm going to use twos because if it's one, two, three, lucky seven, maybe this is the trick we have to use. You can see these twos, we've got exactly the same setup i.e. these twos are the only twos appearing in their, their own sort of three by three uh, boxes and if you contrast that with the six say you know you can see a six is these sixes share three you know the first three rows and ditto these sixes do as well. So this sixes would not be a good candidate for the slot machine. So let's do the same thing with twos. Um, we can highlight these twos here and think about where twos can go in the rest of the grid. So it's going to be those three squares, these three squares, these two squares, these squares, these squares. I get as usual, I've missed off the middle again. Okay, so are there any, yes, yeah, so let's have a look at these two. Let's consider whether, let's pick this one. Let's see if that could be a two. So if this is a two, I'm gonna give us a two here, two here, uh, two here. So this must be a two. Ah, okay, and again, so I think we're on the, we're on the right track here. We're gonna get, We've got the twos repeated now in these two squares. They're both blue, therefore they both must be twos, and that does not work. So that means that this is a two. And is that going to give us anything good? Ah, no. <laughs> um, bother. Well, maybe maybe, have, maybe I do have to use threes as well to finally get somewhere. If it's called one, two, three lucky seven let's check threes as well so move those colors threes you can see they're offset so this is very very um, very likely I think that we're on the right lines here I'm just going to make sure I pencil mark the twos that yeah okay I have pencil mark the twos that I got from that so let's look at threes now you can see we've got these two squares these three squares Just two in this cell again. So let's go with this one. Because, and again, I've picked this one because I can immediately see it's impacting on uh, heavily on two other blocks. So if this is a three, that's going to have to be a three. And this will have to be a three, three, three. <laughs> and again, 
we get the problem. There we go. Two blues now in row eight of the grid. So nice. So this must be a three. Let's get rid of the highlighting. It's one of the good things about the app that or the our website um, app here is that we're able to do this relatively efficiently now. Could never have done this before. So now, so this is a three and this is a three. I can already see there's a three seven now in this block over on the left. And we get threes down here as well. So let's go over here now and see whether we can we can make progress. So we've now got three sevens, three seven pencil marks in these two squares. So this is a three seven pair. We cannot put an eight in this square anymore. If we do, the implication of the pencil mark is we'd have to put a three and a seven in this square. Well, that's not possible. So let's put an eight in there. That gives us an eight here. Pencil eights into these two squares. Uh, I find it easier to see the central notation of the pairs, so I'm going to add the pairs in there. So if we look at this row, you can see we've got six digits in effect in this row now. We need four, six and nine. So this is a four or a nine, and this is a six or a nine. This square looks restricted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, that square, this square can only be a nine. That's a naked single. I don't think, no, that wasn't there. Oh, maybe it was there. Maybe that's been there for a while. No, actually it hasn't, because this eight, it could have been an eight before before we got this eight here. So this 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 wasn't there for a while. That's not a shank by me. Um, now we need one, four, and five into the, the remaining cells in this row. So this square can be four or five. One, four, one, five. I've got a one, five pair now here. So this must be a nine. so many pairs in the grid. So of course this is a pair, all of these are pairs at the top. Um, so this square now is a pair as well, isn't it? Because we've got four, six and nine. Now I've got this nine here. This is a four or a six. And there, ooh, there we've got a little trick, another little trick. So, I want you to stare hard at these two blocks and see if you can spot a way of resolving a number because there's a lovely technique that I don't think we've done on the channel for a few weeks and it's called the Y-Wing. Our Y-Wing is a complicated way of something, of, well, I call it a bent triple. So if we had, if this square here, rather than whatever it could be, if I put into this square if this square could only be a 1 or a 4, we'd look down this column, we'd say, ah, 1, 4, 6, triple. Therefore, these three cells must be the numbers 1, 4, and 6. No one would have any difficulty with that at all. Well, we can actually, um, we can actually use bent triples sometimes to useful effect. And here we can, because here we have a bent triple, 1, 4, and 6 going around like this. Now the critical point that we can recognize here, if we stare at this, is this cell acts as a pivot. So if this cell is a 4, the effect of that will be that this square will be a 1. But if this square is a 6, the effect of it is that this square is a 1. So what we're able to say with certainty is that one of these two wings of the y-wing must be 1. But look at that square. This square sees this square and it sees this square. So there's simply no way this square can be a one. It must be a nine. Ah, no, ah, there we go. <laughs> this is a nine, okay, which means 
we're off and running again. This is a three, which means that this is a three, and this is an eight, which means this is a three. Just checking the eights now, so this must be a six, and this is a one. This is a one, and it's been nine in one of these two positions at the bottom. Four, six. This three here means this. Oops, this is not a three. Oh, I put these in the wrong notation. So there's a three now in one of these squares. Have a look at the top row of the grid where we still need two, five, and nine. So this square is a two or a five. This square can be two, five, or nine, I think. I've just noticed another. There's another Y wing here. Look. Now the effect of this Y wing is that there is a 9 in these two squares but I don't think that matters um, because I don't think there's a cell in the grid the only cell in the grid that sees both of these two squares usefully is that one and there's already a 9 in the row so I don't think we get anything from that that Y wing. We're going to have a look down this column now because we've got six digits in it uh, so 4, 5 and 9 this has to be a 4 or 5 and this up ah, Ooh, okay, so this square now must be a this square must be a five. Four nine six four one five one. So a flurry of activity there, that's hopefully going to be helpful. So much flurry that I've sort of lost track of all the numbers I've just put in. So now this must be a five, I think, and this must be a four. We need two and six into these two squares. We can't yet resolve that. This square can't be a five. Can't be a five anymore. In fact, if we look at this column, you can see we need two, eight, and nine. So this is this is two or eight. And this is eight or nine. Six nine here, six eight here. Five, what's this? Five two five six eight or nine. So that's five or eight. Let's have a look along here now where we need one, two, six, and eight. So this square here is ah, that's a two or a six, which matches up with a two and the six above it. Now that means these two squares must be four and five, I think, which unfortunately looks completely plausible. So this square here is a six or a nine, and this is a two, six, or a nine. I suspect I'm missing something fairly obvious here that would tidy all this up, but oh yeah, maybe this 5 in fact, that's going to force a 5 into that square. <laughs> 5, 2, 9, 5, 8, 2. Well this must be an 8, 6 and 9 here. Got our 2, 6 pair there, so that's a 9 at the bottom. So six here. This now must be three, which resolves a three and a seven, which resolves a seven at the bottom. This must be five into this square because of the eight that's already in the row, which makes this a four and this a five, and this a six, I think. So looking down this row, we still need a one, and we also need a four. 
unless I'm missing something. Square here, or well, these two squares here, we need 2 and 8. You can see that's going to be 8, 2, 2, 6, 6, 2, check, and it's right. So what a puzzle, a real challenge. Um, as I say, I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to try and recreate where I was up to at the various stages of the slot machine and see what the technique was that we could have found had we done grid staring for probably two or three hours. Um, and yeah, do let us know in the comments how you got on with the puzzle and whether it was as difficult as advertised. And uh, do take a look at the Sandwich Sudoku game. We'd be most appreciative of that. Back soon with another edition. Cracking the cryptic.